People always say that you have to have money to make money and that there's an extraordinary level of sacrifice on the road to success. So how is it that investors like us who didn't start out with much money and who don't rely on banks and credit, how is it that we can increase our income and build our wealth in a way that doesn't require us replacing one full-time job with another while still enjoying the things in life that matter most to us? That has always been the big question, and this podcast reveals the answers. I am Carrie Lake, and this is The Investor Warrior. All right. Hey, guys. Welcome back to The Investor Warrior. This is a show where we talk about all things real estate with a little bit of life mixed in. And I've got Ruth Hiller with us today. And of course, my sexy counterpart, Howie Like, also coming in from the office. And uh, we've had a lot of life going on because we just got uh, past Thanksgiving holidays. We were all crazy. Ruth, you just came home from Vail. So we're all just kind of decompressing with you today. <laughs> on the show. Ruth, you get the, you get the decompression show. Holidays are, can be so crazy. Although it was it was really fun. And I wanted to thank you guys. I'm, I'm honored and privileged to be on your show. And I wanted to thank you for having me. And actually, Thanksgiving is my absolute favorite holiday. Is uh, it? Yeah, because it's, it's more... It? Well, because it's more of a Friendsgiving than a, fam, <laughs> a family thing. So um, yeah. I've been hosting Thanksgiving. I used to host it in New York and then I hosted it up in Winter Park. And then I, I, I just love having all those people at my house. It's really fun. Yeah. Yeah. That's I cool. So we, fun. I love Thanksgiving also, but it's one of those holidays that I get real tired after because I also host and then we've got the kids and I made like three pies from scratch this year. I don't oh know what God. got into me. But there was one day where I was in the kitchen for seven hours straight the day before. And then we went, we all woke up and rode, uh, ran the uh, turkey trot 5K the next morning. Oh, my God. Yeah, I panned the turkey cooking off on my friend Marina. So uh, <laughs> I didn't have to cook the turkey. <laughs> you, just, you just got back from Vail. So what part of the country are you in now? I live down in Boulder, Colorado. It's about two hours, two hours. Is it north? Anyway, it's two hours away from Vail. <laughs> well, cool. Well, Howie, I will allow you to introduce right. our good friend, Ruth Hiller. And I'm not sure what yes, Ruth Hiller, yes, MF is. You'll have to explain well, that. We're going we to dive into that. And, um, you know, I just wanted to say really quick, it's been, a, it's been a minute since I've been on the show. So there's been a few. Sh Ruth, thanks to you, they actually invited me back onto the show. They had, they had kicked me off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. because we have a new partner in crime, Danielle Orville, and uh, you know she's much better looking than I am. So her and Carrie have been have been. Uh, it wasn't bad. Ah, yeah. <laughs> so thanks to you, I got invited back on Ruth because let me Yay. introduce you. I have the wonderful pleasure of being a good friend of Ruth Heller's. We met a few years ago, and today we get to close out our Women in Investing series with you, Ruth. Uh, we've been doing a Women in Investing series for a good part of the year now, and you are going to be it. We're going to go into season two pretty soon, so you are the anchor, and uh, you're, you're probably the best person I can think of to anchor this series because Ruth is an absolute powerhouse. She's in the syndication game. She's out of Boulder, Colorado. Uh, Ruth is currently a co-sponsor and general partner in four active syndication deals, has invested passively in 13 deals, totaling over 3,100 doors across seven states in primary markets. Ruth, welcome to the show. And, you know, what can you add to that? What do you, what do you want everybody to know about you a little? And, and don't, uh, well, don't be shy. Well, I don't know what you're thinking, but MF stands for multifamily. So that's what I always <laughs> like to tell people. And then am I allowed to swear on the show? You are. Yes, you are. So I, and then, you know, I, I start with that line. And then I said, by the way, should you invest in multifamily? Yes, motherfucker, you should. <laughs> <laughs> so Ruth Hiller, yes, MF. It could stand for multiple things. Yes. <laughs> your, um, your branding is top notch. And, you know, it's, it's actually interesting. I think it's a good segue to talk, uh, talk a little bit about your journey and how you got to this place. Because when I met you, you weren't necessarily operating at this level doing these things. You were just thinking about, in fact, when I met you, you might not have even been 
thinking about it, right? And so Ruth has an artist background. Ruth is an artist also among her many, many talents. And I could see immediately when you started branding MF Yes, that the branding was just top notch. I'm guessing you designed that mostly yourself, or maybe you didn't. But I, I, I did. I did design it myself. I, I designed the initial iteration myself, mm -hmm. and then mm -hmm. I hired a, a firm out of Boulder. I love their branding, and they they upped it a little bit more. So okay. I love. Yeah. So I did the initial, and it, I, it was downloaded to me. I wanted hell yes, but then when I asked a, a bunch of people. They're like, oh no, the Bible Belt won't like that. Yeah. So, <laughs> so if it's not a hell no, it's a hell yes, right? So I like that too. But then the yes MF, uh, it just sort of came to me because we're like, motherfucker, I don't know what name to choose, right? <laughs> yeah, I don't think you'll do well in the Bible Belt at all. <laughs> and that doesn't matter because you're absolutely slaying it. Ruth, take me, you know, because I get to see you, um, you know, a couple times a year. I've got, I get the chance to, get together with you and the different various things that we're involved in. Obviously COVID put a big kind of black hole in that for a little while. You know, I, I, I take me through from, let's say the beginning of 2019, when I really first got to know you, take me through or take us through the journey in your career, where you started then and how you got to this place that you're at now. Would you just take a few minutes to do that? You can take yes, more than minutes if you want. I would love to. So I ended up at a Tony Robbins event in 2017 and it changed the course and trajectory of my life. And, mm -hmm. and I, I've been an artist for about 30 years and, you know, I, I loved making art, but it wasn't as fulfilling for me. And so I entered the Tony Robbins community and I was sitting on a bus one day and I, you know, I was like, God, I don't really want to do art anymore. But I was, I also owned my own 118 unit multifamily property in Los Angeles, California with family members. And mm. this was about in 2018, we weren't getting along. So I, I wanted, I was like, how can I get out of this? Have Thanksgiving with friends, right? Right. <laughs> so I was like, we were, yeah. Exactly. So we weren't getting along and I wanted to improve the property, but I didn't really know. It was at UPW, you know, when that Tony does that exercise, it's like, think of it as something that's stressful. And I was thinking about that. And like, mm -hmm. then I, you know, and then he takes you through, them, through, through some things and then I felt more resourceful. So then I started asking them to like buy me out or me buy mm -hmm. them out. So it was like a, a four year process that just ended, wow. uh, in July, actually. Mm. But then, um, so I didn't know anything about the business, right? So I own this multifamily business. I'm a 50% owner. And mm. basically, I just shut up and cast a check because I didn't really know much about it. So mm. I'm sitting on a bus in Malaysia after I'd made that decision to like, I really need to get more involved in this. And I sat next to this guy named Brad. And I asked him, I said, so Brad, what do you do? <laughs> and he's like, I teach people how to invest in and syndicate large multifamily properties. And I was like, Oh my God, I have one. Do you think you can help me? And so uh, we talked a lot and then I joined his program. And the first, uh, the first uh, seminar that I went to, I took 500 pages of notes and I was like, oh my God, I could do this and I could do that. And, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. And so then I call myself the accidental businesswoman because I've always bought and sold real estate, but I never thought of mm -hmm. it as a business until I met Brad. And so- mm -hmm. You know, then he's helped me along in my in my journey with the, with the multifamily. Like he helped me ten x it and, and helped me. If it wasn't for him, I don't, I wouldn't be the woman I am today. I don't think if it wasn't for Tony Robbins and Brad, I would not be the woman I am today, and been been able to take action on selling that 118 unit multifamily property. So yeah. super grateful. So that's part of my story. Wow. So you've done 3,100 doors and 13 deals. Is that correct? 16 deals. So that those are big deals. So yeah, it's usually 80 units plus. And so okay. I'm, I'm a limited partner in 12 deals. And so that means I'm just invested the money. It's like done for me. I don't have to be a landlord. And then I'm a general partner in four deals. That means I have a job in the deal where I, you know, mm -hmm. everyone has a different job in the deal. So then I'm more in the active role. It's, it, I, I do it for others. So I say, hey, you know, do you guys want to invest in, in this opportunity? And so I'm on that side also. I, I like I, I like both of them. What kind of jobs do you have in these deals? So my main thing is I love teaching people. So I love educating. My avatar is women. 
And so some, I think Howie was the one that said, you, you should, you should do something with women. I'm like, Oh, I don't want to do with women. Right. But it ends up like this. <laughs> Being a woman, I don't want to deal with women. And so, I, I don't know why I didn't, but then just women just became really attracted to what I was doing. And so I'm like, so my avatar is women realtors or, or women that work a lot and that don't really, you know, maybe they have money or not, but they don't know about investing. Right. And so I, I like to, I like to teach about, I've, I know enough about multifamily that I can mm -hmm. teach people what a syndication is and how it works mm -hmm. and how, how do you find a deal? And so that's, I love doing that. I love the phone calls. That's my favorite thing. And then my second part of the deal is I come in and I do a little bit of the asset management, any team that you're going to be on, uh, in a 506B, which is considered a security under the Security and Exchange Commission, you, you have to be actively involved in the deal and it's available only to friends and family. So I do sit in on the asset management. Sometimes I'll do signage or use my uh, design background. And then I also, uh, I, I bring investors in and I raise capital. So those mm -hmm. are my jobs. There's many other jobs to do and uh, and I'm sh I can do them, but I'm, they're probably not my favorite to do. <laughs> I'd love to, I'd love to, dive deep a little bit more into syndication. I think, you know, my experience, uh, a lot of investors, because, you know, as, as I think you would agree, there's so many different types of real estate, so many different types of ways to invest in real estate. You know, syndication is one of them. I think it's also, um, my experience is, is that not all investors, even people that have been doing real estate for a long, long time, have much experience with syndication. And so can you tell us a little bit, like, like what is syndication? If I just ask you, what, is, what does that word mean? How would you describe it? Well, is syndic it? syndication is a group investment that allows us to buy like a larger property. So like if you guys were just going to go out, let's say you had a million dollars and we're going to go out and buy a, a, t a tenplex or something, you know, a mm -hmm. syndication is a, is a group investment where we can buy 20, 30, 40, 70 million dollar properties as a group and buy yeah. and, you know, buy a big own, oh, have a bigger property. And, and so that's the, the difference. And so the, and the syndication has two two people, uh, two teams. It's like the sponsor team, which are the people that uh, find the deal, underwrite the deal, uh, secure the lending, manage the deal, oversee the capital, you know, the CapEx improvements, oversee the business plan, work with property management, um, work with energy conservation. And then the passive investors are the people that supply the capital in the investment. Mm -hmm. And But also as a GP, as a general partner, I also give at least triple the minimum amount in any deal I'm investing in of my own capital as, so I'm a, even though I'm a GP, I'm also an LP in all the deals that I sponsor. Mm -hmm. So that was one of the questions that I had. There's a lot of uh, roles that get thrown around and terminology around what, what all the, all, all the different roles are. Can you kind of walk through what the different roles are? I'm hearing co-sponsors. I'm hearing general partners. I'm hearing asset management. I'm hearing limited partners. Can you just kind of walk through what each of those are? And yes. Quick, quick description on what that is. All right. So hold on. The, the roles, um, the roles of the GP team would be source the deal and work with brokers. Um, then we would negotiate with lenders and sign on the loan. So again, as a GP, you put up part of your liquidity and net worth. Um, mm -hmm. We hire legal uh, for syndication documents. So they need to have it. So it's called a private placement memorandum since it is a security. Uh, mm -hmm. Uh, the GP team writes the business plan. So if 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 I say like, hey, do you, you can double your money and get seven percent cash, like what they've done is they've underwritten the deal and show that how the investor could could re receive that. Um, we raise capital to fund the deal, and then we we hire a third party property management company to run the property. That's what I love about multifamily is because. I've owned smaller multifamily and it's you're, it's, you're more of a landlord versus the third property management company. They usually take 3% and they're on site. They do on site leasing, they do mm -hmm. repairs, they do CapEx. And, and then the asset management, which is, I think is the most important job in the whole syndication. Once the deal is up and running is like a producer. So they, they manage, the property management team, they oversee the capets, they look at the bank accounts, they make sure it's on budget. So 
For mm-hmm. me, when someone asked me how I pick a deal, I pick a deal based on the asset management and the and the track record of the team. Sure. So, because the the deal could be any, and all the numbers look great. The deal could be anywhere. Um, and then we also oversee any improvements. Like on our last property, we painted, we did new signage, and so there's always someone that's boots on the ground mm-hmm. that is on site overseeing that. Um, and then there's investor relations and the financial reporting. So that's what we do. And then. Then we also hire, like there's other t- team members which aren't exactly on the team, but it's like the insurance company. So there's insurance and then there's energy conservation and there's the legal team. So there's a bunch of, and then we're right. all in, in uh, like a, the people I work with are all in Brad's group. So it's usually with, they have a certain level of education. So uh, hopefully that like, ex- uh, the service providers are, are like your power, what we call the power team. Yeah, exactly. So Exactly. And so what is your favorite role that you? My favorite, my favorite role is I'd love to do investor relations. I love just talking to people. I'm super excited about multifamily. If I wasn't, I wouldn't be in 16 deals. <laughs> <laughs> and so I love sharing like how it could help people, you know, all the, um, you know, being a, owning property without the hassles of being a landlord, right? You don't have to deal with the four T's, tenants, trash, toilets, or termites. You can just, mm-hmm. you know park your money somewhere. <laughs> yeah. And so I love doing investor relations and then getting people excited about the deal and bringing in capital. Okay. And that's in the general partner role. It sounds to me, and you can tell me if I'm missing something here, it sounds to me like the difference between the GP, the general partner, and the asset manager is that the general partner's role seems to be a little bit more active during the acquisition period. And the asset manager is much more on the post-acquisition and the management of the ongoing of the yes. ongoing. Uh, yeah. Is that, is that accurate to say that? Yes, that's accurate. But even yeah. so, even, you know, you want to make sure that a good asset manager is on the team from the get go, right? That they have a good mm-hmm. tracker, track record with, you know, and there's different asset classes. There's A, B, and C. So, yep. you, you, you know, if you're going to buy an A property, you want to make sure your asset manager has uh, experience running an A class property because it's different mm-hmm. than a C class. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. You know, there's yeah. D too, right? Yes, I, I stay away from those. <laughs> <laughs> I imagine you do. <laughs> then I'm a landlord again. Like, forget right. it. <laughs> right, right. Although right. I, I appreciate, I appreciate people that want to do that. That's a lot of heavy lifting for sure. I, yeah. it's, it's a niche. It's a niche that it's people niche. fall into, yeah. and you're either good at it and like it, or you hate it and you get away from it. Yeah. So, well, we I've used to do only C class, and now we're veering. Yeah. Now I've done B class and then I have a new property that's actually 2021 build. So that's an A right. class. Yeah. yeah so, so, cool. so it strikes me that the general partner or general partners, there, there can be one, right? It doesn't nec- there doesn't necessarily have to be more than one GP. There can be one, but within this ecosystem that I'm in, there's, you know, there, there's lead sponsors and then there's maybe uh, some other sponsors that are under there and are maybe helping with asset management, but on most of my deals, like the last deal, I was a, a lead sponsor. There was uh, four of us. So, and then some deals have 10 sponsors. I try to stay away from those deals. Right. But, um, mm. you and know, our sponsors, sorry, I, get, I, I tend to get hung up on terms just so I know what I'm talking about. So are sponsors and GPs the same thing? Yes. Got it. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. Th- thank so you co- for asking that. <laughs> <laughs> so co-GP, co-general partner is also um, but you can be a co-GP in a deal and not have any, and not be a syndication. It could be like a, you mm-hmm. know, a joint venture. Like let's say the three of us brought a property together, yeah. then um, we, we would be general partners, but not sponsors. Got yeah. it. Got it, got it. Uh, so Ruth, are you mostly looking at on-market deals, off-market deals, or a combination of both? I don't, I'm not the deal sourcer. What okay. I, what I've done in the last three years is uh, in the group that I'm in is made alliances and made like solid relationships with people who, and found out who had track records and then decided who do I want to work with. Right. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, luckily I get to work with the teams I want to work with that have good, that have a good track record. So Mm -hmm. again, I always pick the team, not the deal, you know, Mm -hmm. who's the, who's the ringleader in the whole thing? Uh, Brad Sumrock. (laughs) <laughs> is he in every one of your deals though oh no no he's not in every deal he just teaches us so he's yeah, set up a, no no he's not and he like and he doesn't right. take anything from us like there's no we don't have to give him a fee for any deals we have it's right. up to us to invest right so right. he just so my take, question, yeah. yeah my question was who's the ringleader in the deal because there's usually a ringleader there's there's the one that everybody's going to turn to when the questions are being asked 
Yeah, like um, like on my deal in Dallas, I'm in a 143 unit deal in Dallas. I mean, my so I brought investors in. So my in investors asked me, right? Mm -hmm. But then then the other two partners who are the asset managers, if I can't answer the question, I point it to the it's usually the asset manager or the yeah. person that, that did the uh the the executive underwriting. Mm -hmm. so it takes, that, so it takes that, a village. It takes a village. It takes a village. I would never do this on my own. <laughs> I, I tried once and in like 23 years ago, I had to do a 1031 exchange. And so I exchanged sure. into this 24 unit down in Denver and I lost my shirt on it. Cause I did, I didn't know. I thought, Oh, easy. No, yeah. no. So I didn't know you had to do lease audits. I didn't know. I didn't know how to, do, to you know, do the lease audits or the due diligence or any of that. So right. lesson learned. <laughs> well, more people, more, more people uh, spend more money trying to, trying to get the 1031 uh, exchange than they would have if they just paid the blessed taxes and moved on. Oh, totally. <laughs> and well, and that's what I love about multifamily too, because this year is the last year, but they have something called bonus depreciation. And so if you, you know, the last, I didn't pay taxes the last two years because I was able to reap enough bonus depreciation to offset my taxes. Um, mm -hmm. And it's going away at the end of this year, which is sort of not totally going away instead of a hundred percent. Like if, in one of my deals, I invested 700 and I got 700 losses off my taxes. Mm -hmm. So um, next year it would be 80% of that. So mm -hmm. it's, it's, they're gonna, yeah. 80% still pretty good. Can you tell us what bonus depreciation is? Uh, yeah. It's eight, it'll be 80%. So if I, if, if I invested 700 K, it would be 80% of that instead of a hundred percent of that to write off your taxes for next okay. year. So basically they're writing off the capital that you put in. Well, kind of, they're, they're writing. So what bonus depreciation is, it's based on a cost segregation study. And what that is, mm -hmm. they come in and they they take everything, like in a norm, if you owned a multifamily on your own, you could depreciate the asset, like your home. A home mm -hmm. is 37 years and multifamily is 27 and a half years. And so right. five right. years ago there, or eight years ago, they passed a law that said you could take all the bonus depreciation and depreciate it in year one. Mm -hmm. Right, so, exactly. We're doing so, that right now with a commercial building that we're, that mm -hmm. we're I'm not sure Carrie even knows, but we've got a, a cost segregation study going. I Next know. Time. I was there with the CPA. <laughs> I don't remember you being when we had the conversation. I was but, listening. I was okay. even taking notes. Well, and, cost extension. It's huge. It's huge. That, it's huge. But the thing is now, with the, the, the thing that's also affected it with like the lending, because the lending rates are so high right now. You know, if you're only getting a 50% loan to value, it is, it really is correlated to the bonus depreciation, you're not going to get as much because, you know, the, right. Like, cause we did a 77% loan to value. And like, I think the bonus depreciation was 5.5 million. And then the, the, the amount the investors put in was 5.5 million. So it was a hundred percent bonus depreciation. But now, you know, if you're only getting a 50% loan to value, the numbers are lower. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So yeah. not going to see yeah. as much. Mm -hmm. How's, um, so, you asked a question, Carrie, a little bit ago, whether you were sourcing the deals uh, through listed properties or, mm -hmm. or the sellers. And you said you weren't on the source side. Well, However, I'm, you know, I have some, I have relationships with brokers here in Denver. And so mm -hmm. I don't like my other business partners who've done like 10 full cycle deals, the brokers come to them first, you know what I mean? And mm -hmm. so I don't necessarily have that relationship, but I, here in Denver, they'll, they'll call me up. There just haven't been many deals in Denver that pencil out great. And so and that, that was kind of where I was going with it. Like the last year we've been looking at the, the, the commercial deals. So I, I put multifamily in the commercial. Oh, book. totally. So we've been looking at the commercial deals and you know, 99.999% of the listed stuff out there just doesn't pencil out. And that was before the rates went, through, <laughs> went skyrocketing up. So are you seeing this, uh, are you seeing this interest rate environment slow down the amount of deals that are that, that are penciling out for you guys? Yes, um, a lot of the people that, that a lot of the teams that I was working with have put it put acquisitions on hold right now. Um, we did find a deal that has a three point five fixed interest rate. We're assuming the loan, and it works right. out. So yeah, so that, so that works out really well. But you know, not at seven percent. Some of the deals, and so yeah. you know what what we talk about in in our coaching groups is, <clears throat> you know how the um, the NOI, the net operating income might come down a little and, you know, the cap rates are going up a little, which means the values of the property come down a little bit. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, and so what I think is 
there's a lot of people also that have bridge debt, which is a floating yep. rate debt. And mm -hmm. I think some of those people might be upside down next year. So I think we're going to see yeah. a lot of opportunity. Yeah. Yeah. True. No. Are you still seeing a lot of assumable loans out there too? Um, you know, because I'm not acquisitions, I haven't really been paying attention. Yeah. <laughs> but there okay, are fair the, enough. The, the, the assumable loans, definitely, like I said, um, on a deal I'm working on now, yeah, has an assumable loan. And yep. So and so sometimes you can you can add a supplemental and sometimes not. Mm -hmm. So yeah. Ruth, are you able to talk about in these syndications what it looks like? You get a little bit of an echo. I know. I heard that. Yeah. It's happening for all of us. Oh, it's um, gone. Yeah. I just had to like stop talking for a second. Uh, are you able to talk a little bit about the, how, how compensation is, is, uh, is, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? You know, segmented throughout the, uh, throughout these syndications. So you got your GPs, you've got your um, asset managers, you've got your uh, limited partners, which are the actual capital investors, correct? The limited partner side of it. Mm -hmm. uh, how, how are these deals structured in terms of who gets what out of the deal? Well, so I only invest in or syndicate with people who do an 80-20 split. I, I don't like preferred returns. There's a lot of, hey, if you've invest 200, then you get 10%, and but you don't get equity at the end. And like, to me, that's just over my pay grade. So uh, mm -hmm. the deals I'm invested, it's usually an 80-20 split. The the passive investors get 80%. They get paid before the sponsor team. Okay. Um, and then property management is 3% of the income and the asset management fee is 2% of the income. Mm -hmm. So those are the fees. And sometimes on some deals, I'll see it's an 80-20 split. And as soon as you've doubled your money, they'll take it to a 70-30 split. Mm -hmm. And then also, also with the bonus depreciation, you have to make sure that you ask, uh, you know, are the sponsors taking extra bonus depreciation? I don't like those deals. I want it to be spread out to everybody. Mm -hmm. Right. So um, I make sure it's more equitable. Yeah. And what's your typical exit strategy? How long are you holding on to these properties? It's three to five years. And mm -hmm. and right now with the loans going on loans and interest rates, it's probably, probably looking at a five year, like one deal I'm in, in Florida. It's interesting because I invested in this deal in Florida in 2019, it was my first syndication I invested in mm -hmm. and we paid 21 million for it. And now it's worth over 37 million in three years. And yep. so we were going to refinance and then the, the interest rates. <laughs> so, right, right. so we, we didn't, but like that, like that's one of my, and so that sponsor is actually one of the, the, the sponsors that I'm working with now. Cause I've, I've invested in three of his deals. And that's sort of, I invest in people's deals and see if I, you know, like them and the, like the way they run the property. And then what is that, is that someone I'd want to work with? Mm -hmm. So. Oh, so you're going to be selling that one soon. I don't know. Um, Cause we'll see it's, it's doing really well. We might just keep it, yeah. you know, it's five year maximum. You know, okay. unless there's something crazy in the economy, right? Because most investors, right. your you know, your investment is illiquid. So most people don't want their money tied up for more than five years. Mm -hmm. Right. And so, exactly. and exactly. that particular sponsor has like uh, tripled, doubled, and tripled people's money in in his business plans. Yeah. So, but who knows yeah. going forward? I never, you know, it's projected. It's always projected, <laughs> as you guys know. <laughs> <laughs> if we only had a crystal ball. I know, right? It's like. Ah. <laughs> We'd all be yeah. very, yeah. very wealthy. Yes. And in, and in the 80-20 model, it is strictly equity, correct? Uh, eight, no, you get cash flow and equity. So let's say on a deal, let's say you invest 100000 and mm -hmm. it cash flows 8, 8%. You know, you get your 8% cash flow. And then at the end of the deal, when you sell it, you get the, the, the 20%. Mm -hmm. got, so, it, got it. So you're, and, so you're getting your pro rata share of the cash flow. Yes. So if you invest a hundred, let's say it's a double your money, maybe you would get, you know, if it, if it was 8% cash flow, that would be 40,000 in cash flow. And then you would get 60,000 in equity if it was a double your money over the business plan. Does that make sense? Yep. Okay. yep. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Tell me a little bit, you, you, you touched on this a few minutes ago. What has been your learning curve on the legalities of syndication? Uh, about what not to do, you mean? 
<laughs> well, what you have to do. <laughs> <laughs> or what you have to do. Well, there's a lot of legal stuff, yes. especially. Yes. 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 Yeah. Well, because there's a 506B and a 506C, and you just have to be really diligent if you're doing a 506B. Like, if I'm doing a 506B, I can't advertise it. And I can't tell people who I don't know about it, right? And so if if I did, and the you know the, the Securities Exchange Commission, you know, caught you, you could be you could be banned or punished. We we say any any uh, agency with three letters is not good, like the FBI, <laughs> the CIA, <Right>. the SEC, <laughs> the IRS. <laughs> what's, the, what's the legal difference between the B and the C? So what 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 constitutes uh, being under the the B rules versus the C rules. Well, the B rules, the thing I like about the B is you can have sophisticated investors. And so there's accredited and sophisticated. And so mm. accredited investor is uh, anyone that makes 200,000 more a year or is worth at least a million dollars in net worth. And right. sophisticated investor is just someone who knows how to uh, analyze an investment. Mm -hmm. And right. you're only allowed up to 35 of those in a 506B. And a 506C, you, it's only accredited. And so I like being able to help people that've never invested before, right? Mm -hmm. So, because a lot of mine are just getting started and building their wealth. And so it's good for me to have sophisticated investors. And so that, that's why I like the 506B. And what yeah. standard are they? I mean, if, if you were to get audited, what this, what's the standard that they would use if you even, I'm, I'm sure you know this, if, if they were to say, okay, you have 10 people in this deal, how do I know that they're all sophisticated? Um, what's the standard being used? I mean, is it something where you know they went to a to one to one of Brad's classes and learned how to analyze a deal? Therefore, no, it could be, no it, sophisticated. It just says if you know how to analyze risk and and mm -hmm. analyze an investment, there's a really it's very vague. It so vague. it's pretty vague, but accredited is not vague. And so if in yeah. the five hundred six C, you have to submit a an accredited form to right. the deal to be able to invest to prove to show it. But right. in five hundred six B, you do not. Mm -hmm. It's much easier. And what's what what determines which one you're going to go with, B or C? I like the Bs because I like having people, you know, allowing friends and family, right? And, and sometimes mm -hmm. what, what you can also do, most of the ones, I'm going to say all that I'm invested in are a 506B. I'm not okay. in any 506C. Mm -hmm. um, you know, sometimes the, a sponsor will take start as a 506B and then- yeah which allows some of the uh, sophisticated and then you can switch it over to a 506 C and then advertise like, to get it out more. Yeah. If it's a huge yeah. capital raise, if it's like $50 right. million or something, right. Then right. you want to. Yeah. Yeah. So you can, yeah. with a 506 C you can advertise. Yeah. So I could put it on that's Facebook. One. Yeah. So, so 506. That's do it. Yeah. That's yeah. That's one reason to do it, but uh, yeah, I know I haven't, I haven't done one yet. So I'll, I'll let you know when I do. <laughs> And then I, the, other then reason, I, the other reason would be to take on more investors than the 35 cap. Well, no, the 35 cap is only sophisticated investors. <laughs> I, I could have 300 investors in my okay. deal, but only 35 of them could be sophisticated in the 506B. Right. right. The rest would have to be accredited, correct? Right. So, yeah. so it allows, but in the 506C, there's no okay. sophisticated. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I was <laughs> So I'm like, I know it's confusing. It's like, huh? Yeah. Interestingly enough, and I think this is related, but I might be changing the subjects is, is that I have seen uh, some webinar action you have going on. Yes, I have a webinar. Oh, uh, nice. Wednesday night, uh, Multifamily Syndication 101. Is that ah. your webinar that you're going to be running? It's my, I do a monthly meetup and so it's my webinar. Very and cool. so I'm hosting that with my uh, business partner, Sandhya Sashadri, who's a really kick-ass asset manager. And so she's an, a wealth of knowledge. She's mentored me a lot over the last three years. And then we're, we're business partners on two properties in Dallas. Oh, that's, oh, that's fantastic. Awesome. What's so the, what time what's, is that? That's your time? Is It's 5.30 p.m. What is it? 5.30 p.m. Mountain Time, mountain time. November okay. 30th. November 30th, 5.30 p.m. Mountain Time. And so okay. I don't know how I can give you the link, but if you want the link, I can send it to you. Yeah, what's, we what's the link? Get it into the, I actually have it. We can Danielle can get it into we'll the- put, We'll put it into the uh, Facebook comments and the YouTube comments, and then, um, yeah, we can throw oh, it up. That's awesome. Yeah, and who are you? What, what's your audience for the webinar? Um, 
It's just, it's women. Like, women. I, <laughs> but I love men too. Men are welcome to invest. Women. <laughs> um, so I, no, it's, it's women, right? So it's, like, I think they're aged like 35 to 50, right? So um, that's awesome. Th those are the most people I, I have about 50 or uh, over 50 people signed up so far. So I think I've got a cap it at a hundred. So I'm yeah. excited about it. And there'll be a replay if, if people can't mm -hmm. get in or miss it. So sure, sure, sure. And it's going to go more in detail, like what a syndication is. And then, um, yeah. And all, you know, how do you invest and all that kind of stuff. And then Sandia, since she's an asset manager, is going to take take the audience through like what it looks like when a deal goes full cycle, because she's been through quite a few full cycle deals. And so I can. Yeah. yeah, cool. OK, yeah, we'll throw that up in the comments. Oh, that's awesome. How else can people contact you, Ruth? Uh, they can email me at Ruth at yes, MF now.com <laughs> should you invest in multifamily when when is a good time now yes yes mother effer now. yes motherfucker now.com <laughs> i love it well, that well thanks so much for coming on ruth this was fun i think the last time i saw you was in 2019 we were in maui i think that's the last oh, was time that the last face time? to face yeah oh, i missed you guys i know that was a while ago you guys should come visit me here at uh, and let's go ski. We should. We should. <laughs> I'm not a good as good of a skier. You guys can go hit the blacks. So I don't. You can go <laughs> snowshoe. You can get a spa treatment. Yeah. <laughs> I ski. I just I'm a cautious skier. I only go blues and I go slow. That's all right. There's... I have a video. I have a video of her. I'll show you Ruth where she had to help me on my roof on the roof for five minutes. <laughs> oh my God. I just don't like. It I it's pretty. funny because. We've like hiked mountains all over the world. We've gone skiing, but I don't really like heights. I don't like <laughs> heights, but I don't think of a ski. Well, unless you're on a cliff, but it's just a hill, right? It's a hill. Yeah. You still like, I remember the first time getting like passing the bunny slopes and then you get into like the real hills like that. For, I don't know if you remember this because you've been skiing Talks. a really long time. No, I remember. And it's you like, feel like you are looking over the edge of the earth because you can't see down past the hill and you're like, oh my God, what's down there? Like, am I just going to drop? <laughs> I still get that feeling sometimes when I like go down the steep hills, like, oh my God. I still do too. Sometimes if it's really steep, I'm like, ah, you can yeah. always slide down on your butt if you have to. <laughs> that is fun though. That is fun. It depends on where you're at. So some of the places I find myself stuck, you can't even do that. I, oh, um, well, last, I took some good spills last time we went skiing. I went skiing with, you know, Tim Barker. You'll probably cut this. You, you're going to edit this, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, we're live right now. So. Are we? Okay, never <laughs> mind. I do know, I do know Tim. Anyway, <laughs> anyway. You might want to save that one for like a cocktail around the fire. No, no, no. He took me. He came out and skied with Vale. And I said, I don't do cliffs. And we skied in the trees. And all of a sudden, I'm looking over this cliff. And I had to like crawl my way out of there. <laughs> <laughs> that is like the scariest feeling when you yeah, get that, into a, a spot where you're like, oh my God, how do I get down? Yeah. I, and, I do, and I do know Tim very well. Him and I skied in uh, Whistler. Oh, did you? Uh, yeah. In fact, he, he was, we were sort of in the same group level and he was, he was a better skier than I am. And I know he's been skiing a lot more than I have. So I'm sure he has, he has. Oh, really he's, oh, he's amazing. He makes me look like a beginner. Yeah. 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 <laughs> A great guy. He's a great he guy. So awesome. Well, Ruth, I am so excited. You have rounded out in in classic fashion. Yeah, thank you. Investing series. This was awesome. <laughs> I learned a ton. I learned a ton. Oh, good, awesome. I love. I hope. I that's my outcome is to teach people something they didn't know. So. Yeah, absolutely. So good. And be a little so funny. You, you got to be funny. You got to <laughs> spice it up a little bit. Well, especially when you're talking about B's and C's and sophisticated oh, versus accredited, it can get real. It's yeah. five C's and five six C's and asset managers, <laughs> and legalities. Well, thank you guys so much for having me. It was really fun. Awesome. Well, All right. Great. Well, that's closing out our Women in Investing series. Thanks, Ruth, for coming on. Thanks, Howie, my sexy man, my partner across the street at the office thanks for coming on also thanks for having me back love you guys <laughs> yeah you're allowed back now okay you redeemed yourself oh, okay, okay. okay. <laughs> you can thank ruth for that <laughs> i'm a all connector right. all right you guys remember you're only one deal away take care and we'll see you on the next episode bye thank you bye <laughs>